We are live, yeah. on Bring a Trailer, and it's ending this Saturday at 11 a.m. sharp Pacific time. So we thought we would take this opportunity to see if uh, if anyone is tuned in and have uh, have questions, and we can do our best to answer them. And uh, happy to point out details and. Uh, Kind of see where this leads us. We also have a selection of questions asked earlier of us oh, cool. uh, in regards to the Austin Healy. So the first question, what precaution might we take to attempt to start the engine after a long storage period? Wow, that's really a good question. So, so this car hasn't been run for about 40 years. And specifically, this 302 engine has not been run for for about four decades so what i would do is pull out the spark plugs first and introduce either atf or some sort of a penetrating oil like marble mystery oil and let that soak maybe a week um, change the fluids uh, and then i would pull out the distributor because the drive off of the distributor runs the oil pump and with a new battery in place, penetrating oil in the rings and the pistons, make sure the motor is free, uh, spin this up with a drill to build oil pressure. And then uh, once you've established that the engine is free, uh, crank it, make sure you get spark, maybe an external fuel source, and then uh, you know bring her back to life. It's, it's a whole process and uh, there's lots of info out there on, on the various forums that, that, that one can research these things. When we were pushing the car in the showroom, we inadvertently had left it in gear. Um, and I saw the fan turn. So I know the engine is not frozen, but it only turned about halfway. And then the back wheels skidded on our slippery floor. So uh, probably it's a bit crusty at the top of the 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 stroke in, in the cylinders. So uh, again, some penetrating oil and uh, uh, three things that would probably be your first step. All right, great. So second question we've got, can a non-running car be transported and what are your recommendations for shipping? So yes, absolutely. And you can, you can answer that in two parts if need be, sure. obviously. Uh, so yes, a non-runner can, um, the handbrake does work and it rolls and steers. Those are all things you're gonna to wanna to know. Um, foot brake doesn't work, so caution you know, for loading and unloading. They'll typically winch it onto a transporter or the really fancy enclosed rigs have a, a lift gate where it lifts it up and they roll it in uh, like that. Uh, bring, bringing it off the truck, uh, you know, we've had this air, air in these tires for a couple of weeks now, and they're holding. So, you know, these are the street tires. It also has racing tires that come with it. If, uh, if the ultimate buyer wants them, they're super wide Firestone uh, slicks on modified Healy wheels. But uh, I would suggest transporting it on these, because they are known to hold air. It's also more narrow. Yeah, it's more narrow for getting on and off the truck and things like that. Um, but in case, you know, they lost air, because they are 40-year-old tires, uh, most transporters have a compressor on the truck. They can air them up for you to get it off. So, you know, have a buddy with you to help push maybe and get it into your garage. The transporters will usually come right to your door, um, but you can coordinate that with them. Uh, 
We've had a good experience with an outfit out of Coral Gables, Florida called Right Way Auto Transport. And our representative is uh, Phil Sachs. So you can reach out to them, uh, direct email us if you like, and I could send you contact infos, but it's all pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Great. All right. Question. I would bring back it. I want to bring it back to the original Austin Healey specifications. How do I know all the parts are there? Okay, another good question. So in the bat auction, there are at least 10 photos of all the parts spread out, which are now in these boxes for convenient shipping. There are literally hundreds of parts here. And while we did not inventory every single part, uh, it appears that the, the big ones that might not be here would be the original Austin Healey transmission and the seats. Those are the, the, the two biggest items we know of. Everything else appears to be here. Um, and small items like fasteners and such, you'd replace them with new anyway, nuts and bolts and gaskets and things like that. But we've got all sorts of hardware, you know, headlight buckets. These would be for fog lights. At one time it had fog lights mounted on the bumper and these are grills for, for stones. So these boxes are full. These are air horns, look like Italian air horns. That's not stock Healy, but uh, a lot of people fit those back in the day. We've got an old soft top, which would be replaced, obviously. Any soft part would get replaced. Most importantly for the top is the, the frame. This, the soft top frame is here. We've got bumpers here. And all this can pretty much easily be loaded in the car for shipping if you want everything. Uh, there might be some buyers who, you know, we got our own engine we're going to drop in there and they may not want to go to the bother of shipping all this, uh, all these items. And that's fine too. We can find a home for them. More big items. We've got the Healy cylinder head. There's an extra bell housing for the V8 engine. This is another manifold. This is a four barrel carburetor manifold. What's, what's mounted is a two barrel. And this is the original Austin Healey intake manifold for the SUs. One item that might be a little challenging uh, to get in the car for the shipping is the Austin Healey engine block and crankshaft because it's really heavy. It, it took uh, the, the long-term owner, Serge, and myself and the flatbed driver, all three of us, to almost lift it and slide it and get it onto the trailer. So it probably weighs 300 pounds plus. Um, but one restoring it back to Healy Specs, you definitely want this and we'll find a way to get it in the car and maybe put some boards under it to stabilize everything. The other, you know, volumetric issue would be shipping racing wheels. Uh, it could turn out that if we were to mount these, it might be more on the car, it might be more efficient to stack the street wheels in the car because they're smaller. So these things will kind of address when we find out who the auction winner is and what their purposes are. All right, great. I think that was a great answer. Next. Why was this car parked in the 1980s? Did something break on it? So, no, nothing broke. And uh, this car was street registered as well as being a race car. Um, in the 80s, at that point, he was married and starting a family and had an avocado grove, doing work as an engineer. So he was quite busy. And sadly, his car projects got pushed to the side. This car, along with his tow vehicle, which interestingly was a Mercedes Pagoda, the W113, uh, they were stored in his avocado barn for about 35 years. And it was only in the last two or three years that it was in uh, Escondido, 
uh, under a cover, a waterproof cover. Fortunately, in San Diego, it's very dry. We wish it rained more than it did, but uh, it's very dry. And this car has escaped without without any significant uh, rust perforation. Yeah, obviously it has some surface rust, but surface that's- Surface rust, and there's yeah. some small peripheral areas where you would find perforation, very typically like right here. And this is at the periphery of the of the rear wings, as they call them in England, the fender. And these bolt on and off really easy. And this would be a very simple repair for someone going back to stock a Healy specification. You want to run the fenders. His method, depending on the track, if he was you know running the skinny tires, he had fenders on because he you know usually had fenders on driving it as a street car. But when he was really upping his game in autocross, he put the super wide tires on, which will clear the fender lips. But if you put a driver in it and side loads, which you have on the racetrack, they would contact. So the fenders came off for, for racing with, with the wide wheels and tires. We've hung them back on for convenience. Um, yeah, and shipping, shipping and, yeah. and all that. Yeah. It's easiest uh, for shipping, but, but these come off, off and on really easy. And again, the only rust perforations are at the periphery of, of the superficial panels. You know, nothing uh, uh, on the frame beyond the surface rust. All right, great. There was mention of Holtville as a caption of one of the photos. What's that? Yes, Holtville, which is in east east to San Diego County, or, or probably, I think east farther east than San Diego County. I forget which county it is, but it's in the desert, and it's an old air base. And there's a a big history of sports car racing on air bases, because back in the day when the GIs came home from Europe after the war, they brought sports cars and they wanted to run them and race them. And they had, and then we had lots of uh, air bases that were were underutilized. And some of the generals liked racing, so they would, you know, close down a section, put out the cones, and on the various runways they would set up a racetrack. So that's what Holtville is. I've actually run there with the Porsche Club. I actually got top spin of the day one time because I spun out on the with the last turn. Uh, but this car ran at Holtville. All right. Does it roll and steer? Does it have brakes? I think you may have addressed yeah, a portion of this. Before we got to that, that uh, question was uh, uh, item there. But yes, it rolls and steers. Does not have a foot brake, but it, it has a, a hand brake, uh, which seems to hold. I wouldn't trust it like on a truck, but certainly the transporters will strap it down once it's on. All right. Um, find on Bring a Trailer. And historical letters to Donald Healy and company included. They are, absolutely. And uh, uh, they're all included. Uh, we're ones for wanting to keep all the history together with the car for future generations. And actually, this whole box over here are books, documents, and the drawings. And some of them are, are old club newsletters. Here's, you know, the Healy Club. This is a really old membership card with his name on the back. And they're probably what are monthly newsletters. There's, there's stacks of these. This is from 1982. This was after he moved back or he moved to California. Originally, he was in Arizona going to the University of Arizona for his master's in engineering. And... Uh, he ran it at uh, Phoenix International Raceway, so it's got some nice history. You know, he had all kind of you know, chassis adjustment analysis. You know, he was you know deep deep into it, so it all goes with the car. Yeah, he's got binders, binders, holders, and yeah. binders. It, Here's an original workshop manual. You know, vintage in its own right. That goes with the car. British Motor Corporation Limited parts list. So it all goes with the car. There's, you know, 
probably 20 pounds of uh, <laughs> documents here. All right. So, what will be the likely procedure for receiving the car from the transport truck a couple of weeks from now if we buy the car? Yeah, so same question that other fellow asked or that we answered is uh, um, you will coordinate with the transporter for, you know, drop off time and location. Um, they'll meet you there and... Again, you probably want to have a buddy to help push because it is a roller and a pusher and uh, it's going to come off the truck. They'll be able to air up tires if they happen to go down. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's yeah, pretty it's, simple operation. Uh, the shipper will obviously be in communication for a right. lot of it as well. Yeah, and, and they've done this hundreds of times. It's nice to deal with, you know, with a professional that it's what they do. So it's not, it's not their first rodeo. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, exactly. If someone wanted to come by and pick it up from here though, bring a flatbed. Yeah, absolutely. Bring a trailer. Yeah, um, bring a trailer. Bring, yeah. <laughs> bring a trailer and uh, preferably, you know, a flatbed trailer and uh, our crew will help you load it and, uh, and then uh, strap it down and secure all the parts and off you go. All right, great. How will I find someone to work on this? I've heard people with this old school mechanical knowledge are a dying breed. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, but, you know, th there's a, a new movement with a lot of uh, young folks going to school for auto mechanics and auto restoration now. There, there's a number of schools that have cropped up. So there, there is a young generation coming back up into the hobby, and they like these old cars as well. And typically every major metropolitan area will have a number of old school type mechanical shops who, who know how to work on this technology, whether it's a hot rod shop, a custom fabrication shop, and, you know, like a hot rod shop, they can work on this engine. It's, it's classical hot rod it, it being a Ford 302. If you're going back to Healy spec, you would find an old school British shop. And this is another area where the forums online are invaluable for referrals to shops. What kind of experience have they had with various shops? So uh, sign up with the club, get on the forums, ask questions, get referrals, things like that. But uh, certainly uh, the, the, these cars are not going to be relegated to uh, the barns again, I think there's enough interest out there that they're coming back on the roads and back on the tracks and people are enjoying them. All right, and if there are any questions in the chat, we are happy to take them as they come. Brian, what would you do with the car if you were uh, to restore it? And that's, that's always the big question and everyone has an opinion. Because we're kind of in the middle here. It's kind of both the Healy and the Racer, and you can go either way with your restoration, yeah, right? I mean, it's a special. And, and, you know, Serge was forced to race against Cobras and Corvettes because of the V8. It's a modified car. And uh, so it was in that class because of that. Uh, again, everyone has their own opinion. If, if I was keeping it, I like to keep keep things kind of in their, their last iteration. And, and, and I would probably I would probably put it back on the street, you know, not not on the track. Because I you know I'd probably take it to the level where it could be on the street, but if you wanted to do a track day, you could. So it wouldn't be like pure track. I want it to be street legal, uh, which it was most recently. Uh, I'd probably keep this engine and uh, for the history, because this car had a 40-year history with Serge, the last owner, uh, owner, driver, builder, engineer. And uh, so to honor him, I would probably end the car. I would keep it in this specification. You know, minor upgrades maybe for street use, but uh, I think I would uh, fenders on, wouldn't go with the super wide, uh, racing tires, but, you know, maybe upgrade the street tires. 
And you know, I know some people would find it kind of weird. I probably wouldn't paint it. I, I would probably weld up the little issues. Like this one here is where he told us the story. He was in the paddock. Uh, I think it was at Holtville actually. And the car was behind a Datsun 240Z first series. And somehow he bumped the starter and it was in gear and it leapt forward and kissed the Datsun. And of course the owner of the Datsun wasn't very pleased, but that's where this issue happened. So I would weld that up, knock out the dents, get the bumpers back on it, maybe clear coat it to preserve the patina at this level. That's what I would do. Other people say, oh my God, I gotta have it painted. I'm going British Racing Green. I want biscuit interior. You're fine, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. But personally, I kind of like the beauty of something that looks like it doesn't run, like it's all disheveled, but you open the bonnet and, and, and in here it's beautiful, all dialed in. It's like, oh my gosh. And then they ask, were well, you gonna restore the body? Well, no, I kind of like it like that, you know? Because you can drive it anywhere and not worry about getting a ding. It's already got dings. <laughs> but again, everyone's going to have their own idea on that. And there's no wrong answer. It's, it's, it's the beauty of the hobby. Yeah, it's, it's very much a clay ready to be molded, if you it, will. Exactly. It, it's, a, it's a blank palette at this point. All right, great. Um, 22 minutes in and no chats necessarily, so... We may be logging off here if we're not going to get yeah. any, any more questions in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, you know, a number of people have reached out uh, direct email uh, through that with questions. And some of these we've answered already, the shipping and all that. Uh, one fellow, uh, a number of people have engines already that are just begging to be put into a project. And so they've asked about dimensions and things like that. And actually knowing that a 302 fits will answer a lot of those questions. But one fellow has a rather exotic engine and he asked for some, you know, the dimension of the frame to the top of the radiator. Because this is roughly your limiting factor because the bonnet fits just right over this. And we measured this at 23 inches to the, the frame that sits under the 302's pulley up to here is 20, 23 and a quarter inches. So that might give some of you the data you need to know if that engine you've got at home, whether it's a, a Datsun 240Z engine or whatever, you know, do your homework and figure out if it'll fit. Uh, sort of the beauty of putting any other engine in is that it's gonna be lighter than the Austin Healy engine. The 302 is probably much lighter than the Healy engine. Uh, so, Blank canvas car for exactly, sure. Exactly. I have a I have a question that I'm sure a lot of people want addressed, and it may be addressed in the bring a trailer. But just to clarify, is there any major body damage on any of the panels that might be worrying? Because it is in a bit of a shape, you know, upon yeah, first review. Yeah, and that's you know someone that takes a peripheral, you know, a look from way back. So, oh wow, you know, it's all the shovel. Well, you know, you get close and look. You know, a lot of the panels are very smooth. That's what the body guys do. They use their hand because it's more sensitive than the eye, especially if paint is not shiny and glossy. Um, so we have the whoops we talked about from the Datsun Z. And then there's another, looks like a, a crack here. And again, a body guy with a, a hammer and a dolly would easily in a couple hours have this straightened and welded up. Um, but there's nothing big as another one here. But nothing major. There's nothing, nothing big. Nothing that would compromise any of the panel work. Correct. The, yeah. the big thing we, we worry about, especially on, on buying a car site unseen, is rust. That's the big, that's the deal killer, basically. And there's no major rust on this car. We can't say there is no rust. I mean, you can look at it and see surface rust. I pointed out a little at the periphery already which are some very small perforations um here i'm not even seeing it you know, this this is all this is all solid here and this is where they all rest because the tires kick up mud here but this, this is this is fine 
The doors are good. And we've got one here on this dog leg. Here's a, here's a rust hole here. And, but again, this is superficial and it's at the periphery of this panel because these bolt on and off. So this could easily be cut and welded uh, to repair that. And again, the beauty of a car with a separate frame and body is that you can take all these off and, and look at the frame, which we've already done. The frame is absolutely solid. Um, so again, we can't say it's 100% it's rust free because you can see some right here. And you know, I've had people say, well, there's no rust on this car. There's just a few bubbles. Okay, if there's bubbles, <laughs> there's rust under those paint bubbles. It's not just, you know, paint bubbles. Uh, so, you know, you know we, we like uh, full transparency in any sort of an auto sale. Uh, but, but, yeah, none of the panels have anything that would be, you know, a major catastrophe. Can all can all be worked with uh, simple simple body tools. All right, great. If there are no more questions, I think we've covered a vast amount of the questions asked of us thus far. Okay, very good. Well, good luck to everybody. Again, the the uh, end time is eleven o'clock on Saturday Pacific time, so don't miss it. We've that's a uh, two o'clock for our friends on the East Coast, yes. just in case. Two o'clock East Coast time on Saturday. All right, great. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully you found this informative. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments, and happy bidding. Take care.